application. Application. So hey guys, can um, you hear me at all? The camera is like being buggy, so I can't share our screen at the moment on my camera, but I am here. I will, like I said, if you have questions, just yell out and I will can slow down and, yourself? okay. Can you take this out? No, I went through, I'll have, I'll have a look at it afterwards. Professor, can you hear me at all now? Okay. Okay. Yes, I know. It's a good, it's, it's too bad. No, it can't be on camera. All right, so um, today and uh, Thursday, we're gonna talk about um, probability and, no, I'm good. And how uh, that is used um, to make decisions. And then we're gonna use that idea in chapters six on, um, because the area under the curve and hypothesis testing and normal distributions are all based on the idea of probability. Um, the fact that everything is between zero and one. So it, this is um, kind of the basic idea of where this whole thing starts in um, using statistics. So we will talk about mean again, we will talk about um, standard deviation again, those things are part of the normal distributions. Uh, but are um, and they include the ideas of, of probability. Um, probability, the biggest place that it occurs we, where we think about stuff is either um, chance of weather happening uh, or gambling. Um, those are kind of the two big places where we see them. You know, you'll see a you ever see a 90% chance of rain. And you're like, okay, well, it's pretty good chance it's going to rain. If they say a 50% chance of rain you know, you're kind of in the middle and really have no idea what's going to happen. And that's where we look at stuff is, you know, these pieces, these probabilities and percentages. Uh, we always turn them into percentages because it may, just makes it easier to talk to, talk about. Um, but they can be written as ratios, they can be written as fractions, um, they can be rewritten as decimals. Um, but so you'll see all kinds of different ways uh, that they occur um, in the real world. Um, as opposed to just, you know, here in mathematics terms. Um, now, when we're looking at probabilities, uh, one of the things we have to look at is the sample space. And the sample space is all of the possible outcomes that can happen. Not all the possible outcomes that we're interested in, but all the ones that can happen. Um, and so the first problem here, it talks about uh, cards happen being... Uh, dealt out and we have, I have eight cards, there's five green, three yellow, and they're numbered, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, with the yellow, and uh, we use, they're here using green and G and Y to don't differentiate between green and yellow, uh, kind of like when we have playing cards, you know, you have spades, hearts, diamonds, clubs, um, there's 13 of each. So that's what we're used to seeing in a normal deck, but they want to make it a smaller set because they're asking you to write them all out. Um, and again, here they're telling you to separate everything with a comma. So make sure that you do that. Um, and, you know, you, they don't have to be in any order. You know, Y1, comma, green 1, comma, Y2, comma green two, two comma y three, comma green three, green four, green five. So those are my options. If I don't put a comma in, it's going to mark it wrong. So notice it's right at the moment, but if I take out one comma and hit enter, it marks it wrong because of the fact that it's looking for the commas and telling you to separate them with commas. And again, in real world, nobody would care, uh, but the computer can only grade the things that it's looking for. Um, so here they're asking probability. Probability is always given in um, so I had all this set up and then I had to restart my computer over and over again. Uh, 
x over n, where x is the amount of successes and n is the sample size. Okay, so in this case here, it's asking about the probability of getting a um, green, and that's how they're going to write it as p of g. Uh, th so the probability of getting a green card. Right. And that's all that means. Um, so we have we take all the green cards that there are and divide it by how many cards there are in, in total. So that's why this comes out as 5 over 8, because I have five green cards, and I can easily count them up. And then there's eight cards in total. So that's where they're getting the 5 out of 8. If I turn that into a decimal, that's fine. Um, uh, point. It's fine with the decimal. Um, they just It's easier to see as a fraction because you can see where the numbers come from. Uh, so that's why they're using fractions. And that's, um, it, it just, like I said, it just makes it easier to see all the things. There were five total successes. There were five items that you could have chosen from. Um, I'm going to skip this one for a second and go to this one. Uh, so part C, we're going to just skip for a second. So probability of G and E. Now, that just means, and um, you may also see it in other books as this, where this stands for intersection, um, which is just another fancy word for and. Um, and depending upon um, the set theory that you're, you're working with, there's different uh, notation. This is intersection and and. This is union and or. And this is not. This is not. This is not. Uh, <laughs> uh, the book likes, you know, the P prime, but we would have, you know, not, you know, probability of, oops. We have, you know, not G, not G, or G prime. Uh, so all of those would be not G, which just means the probability of not having that happen. Um, to find the intersection, we look to see, well, where do both things happen? All right. So in this case here, we have to have both green and even. I have one green even card two green even cards. That's it. Two of them out of the eight, because it's just, again, out of all of them. Whereas this one says probability of G given E. That means first we look to see how many even cards there are in total. One, two, three, and how many of those are green? Two of those three are green, and that's where this idea comes from. This is also, uh, there's a formula for it, um, which is the probability of, in this case, green, divided by the probability of green and even. So we have to find both of those things. We find the intersection of this. And when we divide fractions, remember we flip and multiply. Um, that's where this 2 out of 8 would be multiplied by the probability of this, which was um, I have that upside down. Yeah, that's better. Um, so this would be the probability of the intersection of those divided by the probability that they were even, because it's given E. Sorry, I had that written upside down because I was not thinking. So I would get the, uh, two, the um, even cards is 1 to three of them. So three out of eight is going to go on the bottom. And 
that the intersection was 2 out of 8. So I have 2 out of 8 divided by 3 over 8, which comes out to 2 out of 3. So I don't understand why they don't switch those around, but they do. Um, and then the probability of G or E, which again might be seen with this union sign, is the probability that they're green or they're even minus the intersection of those things. Because if I go, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five greens, six, seven, eight, even, you know, three evens. So five and three is eight. I have eight out of eight, which doesn't make any sense because there's two cards that are not green that are also not even. So that doesn't make sense. We have to subtract out the intersection of those, which is these two here. So it's easy to see when you're counting them. You can go, oh, well, gee, they're green or they're even. Here there's five greens and there's one more even. So that's where the six comes from, six out of eight. Um, and they, so they give you these simple ones to work with so you can, it's easy to count and you can see them. Uh, but you can see, you'll see why in it, when we get to this one that we now have 36 things, it's a little harder to pick them out. <laughs> so um, it's just helpful to have an idea of how they calculated these things. And then the last idea is mutually exclusive. Now, mutually exclusive just means that they don't have an intersection. So they could have been mutually exclusive. These could have just been, you know, one, three, and five. And then we wouldn't have, you know, they would be mutually exclusive because there's cards that aren't green and cards that are even. And there's, you know, they don't match. There's nothing in common. But because there's green even cards, then there is no, there is an intersection and therefore um, they're not exclusive. So if this has a value that's not zero, this thing, they're not mutually exclusive. If this has a value that is zero, they are mutually exclusive. And the other thing they talk about is dependent and independent. And um, one of the things you can find out of that is that mutually exclusive um, values are dependent. So independent just means that they don't have effect on each other. But if they're mutually exclusive, then they do have an effect on each other because, you know, if I'm looking for an, a green even card and there aren't any, you know, given that it's even, what's the chance that there's a green card? It's not the same. So that's why, you know, mutually exclusive does cause uh, dependence. Uh, excuse so me, that's one of the things we're going to talk about as we go on, but... Um, <laughs> I just want to make sure there's no question. Uh, okay. Um, you can also just put them in the chat here if you have questions too. Yeah, for some reason, my like I said, my camera's not working. I don't know. Um, so you know, feel free if you have questions, throw them in here. Um, Somebody just be on the lookout for them, and I will uh, make sure I stop and pause. Yeah, because I can see your, your camera's on, Will, but um, nothing's coming out. That's the beauty of technology. Yeah. Can you, um, you hear any of this? And you can always just put it here in the chat, and I will uh, try to make sure. But, like, if you raise your hand, somebody will see it, okay. right? Because I think you guys can see it there. Why did I hate when that happens? Yeah, okay. Um, so I think people can see if you raise your hand, so you know somebody else can possibly yell. Um, that Will has his hand up and has a question. Uh, Tara, can you can you be on the lookout for that for me? Um, oh, no connection. And Samantha is trying to get in, but can't. Uh, I love technology. <laughs> Every day, it makes my, my, my life so much happier. Um, so for about three years, I kept getting this problem wrong over and over and over again because I wasn't reading it correctly. Um, and that's really one of the big things about uh, statistics is you have to read the problem. Um, the first question asks for the sample space. I never looked at the question. I looked at this. I looked at this and checked them off. And said, oh, why is this coming out wrong all the time? Um, because I wasn't looking at what the question was asking. 
I was listing the events here because like they figure these events, you figure oh, there, those are important. So the sample space are all the possible things that could happen if you roll a dice. You can, uh, well, six sided dice. You cannot get a seven, you cannot get a zero. So all of those should remain unchecked. Everything else should be checked off. Um, so, just, but you have to make sure you read the questions because that's that's one of the big problems with statistics is we tend to not, or we think we're gonna, we know what's going to happen, and so we skim over it quickly, and then we realize that we didn't read the question right. Um, but that's what you do. You have to check off all the possible outcomes. There will be 36 of them. Um, but that's why it's harder to, they're trying to show you that, okay, this is a common thing that we're looking for, but it's not as easy to notice because we are um, now have more of them. If I'd added just one more dice roll, we'd have 216 of these things. And so it would be even harder to see. Um, you know, the probabilities that are going to be asked about. So the first one is find the probability of A. So A is the fact that we have a three or four followed by an even number. So those are easy. I'll just check them off as we go along. So no, there's a four, but that's an odd number. That's a three, but that's not. Here's a four that has an odd number. Here's a four, but has an odd number. A three with an even number, a three with an even number, four with an odd number, three with an odd number, four with an even number, three with an even number. One, two, three, four, five. I'm missing here's the fourth one. Here's the last one. So there are six of these out of the 36 total things that could possibly happen. So um, that's how they get their value here. So there's six of the 36. All right. The probability of B is that the sum of the two rolls is at most seven. That means seven or less. So I'm going to uncheck these. So that means we can have a, a six, we can have a five, we can have a five, we can have a three. We have a six, we can have a three, ten. <coughs> nope, we can have a six, we can't have an eight, we can have a seven, we can't have eleven, we can't have nine, we can have a seven, no ten, five, seven, seven, six, seven, nope, nope, yep, nope, nope, yep, yep, nope, yep, 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 nope, nope, yep, nope. So these are the possible outcomes for that. And if we count them up, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Out of 13. Turn off number lock. 21 out of 36. So that's where those two things come from. So it's useful to check them off. Um, but then again, after we're done, make sure you check up all the ones that were correct. Sorry. Because unfortunately, there's no way to go back and, and figure out where they all were. Uh, so you could do this, for, do this first and then uncheck them all, check which ones are this, which ones were this. Because uh, we're just looking to find the outcomes for those things. And you're going to see this a lot. This book has a lot of this, like, they want to know what does this mean. Um, and so this is a common one. Uh, here we're trying to find A given B. So given the fact that the numbers add up to uh, 7 or less, what is the probability that a 3 or 4 was rolled first? followed by an even number. So given this, so this thing happens, we know this thing is true, what is the probability of this thing occurring? That's what A given B means. And then they ask you to find it. Well, so remember, it's the probability of, we can look and go, all right, well, here's 
all the these. There's one, there's one. There's one. Oh, that's not a very important. So there's three out of the 21, because remember, we have to take it out of the probability that B occurred. So there are three of these out of the 21 things that we found to be true in this case. So again, why it's useful to have the sample space written down because you can easily look for something <laughs> and um, count them up and go, oh, here's ones that make that true. Um, and you know, luckily they give you this, you know, all written out here, but you know, you could actually write them out yourself and you know find the pieces and see where all the parts are are they mutually exclusive nope we know that because this has value right there's an intersection between those two things there were some values that some roles that had a three or four followed by any number that were less than seven you know, we could come up with a pair of things that easily are mutually exclusive. Um, uh, three or four followed by an even number, and the two numbers add up to more than um, 11. All right, it's only one of them, but, you know, uh, only one value, and it's not a three or a four. So we could come up with something that is that makes these two pair that, has these two events and that they're mutually exclusive that that is something we can do um, but we have to figure out what they are but because there is an intersection between those things there is they are not mutually exclusive and then are they independent well because of the fact that this year and this year are not the same they're not independent And we can see that it changed. This went from one out of six to one out of seven. All right. So knowing that the B was true affected A. And again, we could come up with a you know two things that um, didn't aren't affected, but we have to you know we have to actually think about those things and go oh well gee where is something that has this probability of, this probability and this probability have to be equal to each other. And we could, you know, come up with something. Probably should do that at some point and come up with a thing that would give that the same value. Um, but remember, this thing is going to change. So we have to, you know, make sure we're aware of that. And it's, it becomes smaller. So um, so there, there is, it is possible, but it's hard. Like to think of things that are not. Uh, dependent upon each other because usually we're pretty good about thinking about things that are in sorry that are dependent upon each other but finding something that's not is actually pretty difficult um, problem three just asks you to use the formula this and use it to find mathematically to find the missing pieces so we know what this is we know what this is, you know, find, um, sorry, we know what this is, find the intersection because we can use algebra. So 
probability of C given D is equal to the probability of C and D divided by the probability of D. And then we can use the numbers that we have here. 0 0.6 is equal to, we don't know what that is, so we're going to put an X. And this is 0 0.5. And then we just do our algebra. You know, we're going to multiply both sides by 0.5. Those cancel. And remember, so 5 times 6 is 30, but I have two decimal places. So I have to make sure I put my other places in. And there's my answer. That's all they did. They just used some algebra to get that piece. OK, Sam's back. And then they ask us, are they mutually exclusive? Well, because there's an intersection, no, they're not mutually exclusive. But, and we would have known that because this isn't zero. So um, those things are you know, helpful to find those stuff. So depending upon which things they're looking at, um, there's a bunch of reasons. Like I said, this is not zero. And this is not zero. So either one of those two values could have uh, been used to talk about mutual exclusivity. Um, and like I said, you know, that just means that they have a probability of zero happening. They don't occur together. Are they independent? And again, um, because this year and this year are not uh, the same, we know that they are dependent upon each other. So those are things we can use to get that again you know we could have just put the value in and that would have had to work so we could figure out what numbers have to make this thing occur so that they would be you know the same um then they ask you to find probability of d given c well that just means we just switch the pieces around we know this point three we know um, D given C, we now know it's going to be this one. So we plug those pieces in and then we find the probability of this happening based upon the numbers that we have just been uh, using and the formula. We just switch these pieces around, which means that this is not a D anymore, it's now a C. Um, this one here, they talk about the fact that they're mutually exclusive, so that we know that there's no intersection. Um, so why is this false? Well, there's no intersection. This doesn't have a value, or it has a value, but it's zero. So remember, a zero divided by anything is going to be zero, except for a zero divided by zero, which um, gives people headaches. Uh, So because if they're because we know they're mutually exclusive, the probability of one thing given the other thing is zero. And then they ask us, well, what is the probability of this or that? Well, again, it's these two things added together minus the intersection, which is zero. So it's just those two things added together. And um the reason they are independent, uh, sorry, the reason they are dependent is because um, they are mutually exclusive. This here has an effect. The probability of H given G is not equal to the probability of H. So 
um, because those two, th they, those two things have to be equal. Well, the probability of h given g is zero, and zero is not equal to 0.2. So the probabilities of those two things aren't the same. Mutual exclusivity means that they are dependent because knowing one thing happened affects the other thing. So we, there, it's kind of a cyclical. You know, they go back through these three, uh, these definitions over and over again just to kind of get you make sure that they're, you know, you, you understand them. Um, now we're getting into some you know, bigger numbers, but it's just that they're just bigger numbers. They're not, you know, the math is not necessarily harder. It's just that they are larger numbers. Um, so here we have, and we can tell that these numbers are wrong, um, just because of the fact that they're wrong. Uh, but they're just trying to put some random numbers in so you can do the math. Um, excuse me. So there's 268 million people in the United States. And of those, 34,700,000 speak a language that is in English at home. And then of those who speak language, speak not English at home, over 50% of them speak Spanish. So they're trying to figure out, well, okay, we have these probabilities and they've given you um, really a really bad problem because when you go to the drop down menu, you see that one is, is greater than, one says less than, one says equal, and one says equal, and they're the same numbers over and over again. Um, so you can use the same four numbers for each problem. Um, so that, that's why it's bad. Um, but here, so they want to know the probability that you don't speak English at home. So, well, that is this 34,700,000 divided by this number. And that gives me that, which, all right, it is equal to this number. Pretty straightforward. So this is the probability that they did, do not speak English at home. So the probability they do is because those two things are complements of each other, you just subtract them. Like those two things add together will give you one. So if I take this number here, and subtract it one, subtract it from one, one. Oops, I'm in the wrong thing. And then to get this answer, it's just the second answer key, this negative, this negative key, so second negative key, that'll bring that up there, and then I will get my other value, which um, I knew would be the case because, well, there's only two that have equal signs. <laughs> Those are the and those are the two numbers because we know exactly what they are. We have values for those. The reason the others are um, going to be, you know, greater than is because of the fact that they say over fifty percent speak um, you know, Spanish. So because of that, we know that stuff already. Um, so they want to know over 50%. Well, we don't have to know exactly. Is it 51%? It, it could be 70%. It could be 90%. It could be 50.0001%. We don't have an actual number, but we know that it's more than 50%. So because of that, and they want to know well, how many S is the probability that they speak Spanish? Well, half of this number. We can take this decimal here, this point, 
0.295 and multiply it by 50%. And it's going to get give us half of that value. So more than this number. We don't know. It, it could be the entire thing, but it's not going to be less than that. That's all we know. It's somewhere between this 0.06475 and 0.1295. That's all we know. And if we take in this value here, um, we could have again, gotten a better value of it because this is, rounds it. Uh, we round up, but this would probably round down. Um, but it's bigger than this. That's all. That's all that we know. And then the probability that it s given e given sorry given not e. Well, we know that it says of though in the, in the sentence <laughs> of those who speak something that isn't English, over fifty percent of them speak Spanish. So given that they're in this group, this is the probability that they speak Spanish. So that's where that one comes from. Sometimes the questions are a little silly. I can't do anything about that. I didn't write them. And the next one is also really silly. Um, here we have uh, government has a lottery. There's 61,000 people who get green cards. And there are 6.5 million people who enter the lottery. So 6.5 million tickets, 61,000 winners. All right. So they're telling us that here we're going to use the letter G to represent 1. So what is the probability that the person wins? Well, that's we're finding the probability that they win which they're telling us is going to be G. And we have to find this decimal. So 61,000 divided by 65000000000. Wait. Let me just Um up there. So that's ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundreds, thousands, millions. There you go. And that gives me my probability of winning. And they tell us to round more decimal places. So that's what they want us to do. 0 0.00938. We take this 8, make sure we round up. So that's where that comes from. If you Put it in 0 0.00938461554. Yeah. Oops, I had extra yet. I put an extra number in and I put it in early. It's fine with that. That's the right answer. That's, it's just not rounded. Um, they're okay with you not rounding. So if you're like, oh, I don't know, I'll just put the whole value in. Sometimes they're not. It's weird. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to when they are, you know, emphatic about you actually rounding. Um, but you can always be more accurate and there's nothing wrong with that. So the next question says, all right, well, we're going to have, um, finalists. So if you get a letter, you are one of 121,000 finalists, but there are still only 61,000 winners. So this number hasn't changed. It's just this number that has changed. So you went from being part of the entire group to a sample of that group because we now have a smaller section. So we're now 61,000 out of 121,000. And that's where this number comes from. And so what this says is that you win given that you are a finalist. So that's what it asks. So 
So what's the chance of winning if you know that you received a letter? So given that you were a finalist and they're telling us S is, F is a finalist and that the previous thing G was the winner, so they kept that those pieces. So and again, we could do that division. And again, I can put the whole thing in if I need to, um, but you really should learn to round because you're going to be dealing with lots of decimals for the rest of this semester. So um, it is not a bad idea to figure it out. And then are they independent or dependent? Well, they're dependent because it changes the probability. Um, you go from having a 1% chance of winning to a 50% chance of winning. So um, knowing that you are a finalist. So they're not the same. Uh, those probabilities are not the same. This affects your chances of winning. Um, they're not mutually exclusive because um, finalists are the ones who are going to win. So those things, you know, is, is are not mutually exclusive, but they do affect each other. And okay, they give you this um, weird one here. Uh, the probability of uh, this multiplied by the probability of being a finalist, uh, because remember, So um, those things happen. So um, if we found the probability of being of F, which would be this 121 over 6.5 million, multiply that, this number, those, this we multiply to this here times the probability of this thing happening, we would get this number. So that's all I'm trying to show you um, because this cancels out. <laughs> so that's, we know that's gone. But uh, we know they're mutually uh, we're dependent because they're not the same number. There's a bunch of ways for them to, to, to show this. I like, don't necessarily know why they chose some of the ones that they do. But we know they're also not mutually exclusive. I just periodically check just to make sure no one has questions. And that people are here. All right. Um, the next one again is talking about, so these are kind of the same problems over and over again. Um, we have um, testing people to see if they put money, if they put money in an envelope, are they going to return it? And then we have the probabilities of different pieces. So the probability is returned, the probability that you're an economic student, and the probability you came from another class. So those are things that are there. Um, and here they said that 43% of all the money came back. That's where that one comes from. 
um, the probability that it was returned given that it was an uh, economic student is here. And then the probability of somebody else was this one. And again, they then they're going to ask you questions about um, the piece. What do these things mean? What does it mean to, um, given that you know it was an economic student, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Given that it was another student, what does that mean? Why did they? How did they change? Um, this here is looking at um, or. Yeah. So we have O. We have negative, and we have O negative. So, or some people who have O type blood have are positive. Some people who are have O type uh, who are negative are not O. There's all kinds of other things. But this is just going to be the O positives. This is the O negatives. This is um, A negative, B negative. And A, B negative. So those are all the types. You know, those are the, the kind of the intersections that happen. And they're telling us that um, Forty-four percent of people are O, nineteen percent are negative, and forty-eight percent are either O or negative. So, if this is forty-four percent, this is nineteen percent. And the whole thing is 48%. This whole thing is 48%. They want to know how many people are O negative. So remember, it's this plus this minus this intersection here. minus this intersection. So we have to find that. We have 48 is equal to 44 plus 19 minus x. And now it's just algebra. We just do the solution for that. Um, the and then the probability that they are not O negative is everybody else. So once we find this value, we can then subtract it from one hundred from one hundred percent. We would find out how whether you're O positive or A negative, B negative, or A B negative, or A positive and B positive and AB positive. So there's all kinds of things that you could be other than that. They want to know what's the probability of there being one of those people. Same problem, just different type of things. We're just again doing um, uh, finding or. This is a contingency table, so now we're finally getting into those. Um, and those are just have things going in both directions, that's all. And so when we want to read this, this number here is 5 out of 215. But it's also 5 out of 47. Okay, Wavy hair is 47 out of 215. So red wavy hair is 5 out of 20, 215. And knowing that we have um, 
wavy hair, the probability that you will have red hair is 5 out of 47. So we can use this to see uh, conditional, uh, conditional um, probabilities. So you can easily see those pieces based upon the contingency tables. And so you're going to have to do a little math to find the missing pieces. And these are going to add up this way as well as this way. So you're going to have to do some addition or subtraction to find the empty spots. And then find the probability of those things. So we have red, we have probably that they're wavy hair. Well, there's 47 people total out of 215. Easy enough. And you're just going to look at the table and find um, it's not letting me go over any further. Weird. Yeah. That was strange. So we have to find the missing pieces and use those to come up with um, information. The fact that we want not brown hair, okay, complement just means that it's not brown. So if this is brown, the probability that everybody else, we can add those up and that's out of all. The total is going to be the probability that they're not brown. Or we can take the 100 subtracted from the 215, that'll tell us how many people are, again, are not brown. So there's a couple of ways you can go about finding that value, and then they reduced it. Don't worry about reducing it. And then they want to know, well, what does complement mean? It just means the opposite of that, so not brown. And then the last couple problems here deal with, um, oh, this one's a contingency table again. Uh, these two problems here deal with, um, or three problems, deal with a, uh, um, diagram, a tree diagram, I couldn't think of the word. Um, and I'm going to do the bottom one because it's the most confusing of the group. Um, these are pretty straightforward. You know, when you want to find these pieces, you just multiply them. So if I wanted to find the fact that I got tails and a red dye, a red marble, I would just multiply the two thirds times the number of things, and that's going to give me the probability of finding a red ball given that it was true. And I can add those pieces up. So say I want to find the probability it was a red ball, I can do true times this and false or head no, tails times heads and tails. So tails times this, heads times this, and add them up. And it might be, you know, they don't have to be the same thing. So I could find a red marble with the tails or a yellow marble with heads, and I could multiply those pieces, add them up, and that's going to give me the probability. And that's all you're doing with those things uh, for these two problems. For this one, we're filling in stuff, and um, it's asking about um, uh, taking a test and whether you have a false positive or not. And so this hasn't changed. So you have a 46%, 0.52% chance of getting cancer, whether the test is true or not. So we have cancer and not cancer. The um, so the not is the opposite. So again, we subtract this from one. So it's one minus 0 0.4652. So that's probably of not getting the cancer. Um, the test is false, and then not false is just going to be the opposite. So one minus 0 0.5. Five, one. That's where those numbers come from. And then whether it's false or not and true is again going to be the pieces. We're just, you know, it, whether you had it or not, it 
going to be right or is going to be wrong 51% of the time. So that's what's going to be happening with those things. And then they're asking us, well, what, what's the probability of cancer? Well, it's the number that they told you it was. The probability of getting false, given that that happens. Well, this is false, given that that happens. It's also false, given that it doesn't happen. <laughs> so, um, so you're going to get a false answer regardless. And then should you take it? The answer is no, because it's, you know, 50% chance of being wrong, whether you are, have it or not. So it doesn't help tell you anything. Um, you know, the fact that it's wrong most of the time, half the time is a useless test. So that's what that's about. And then the last one, they're just asking us to fill in all the pieces. So if we have 10,000 people and these are the percentages of each group, females are 48.6%, therefore males are 51.4%. To find the totals, we have to multiply that by 10,000. That's how they get those. And then we take these numbers here and multiply them by the percentages. That's how they got these numbers as we go along. And this may not add up perfectly because I see here a 4 and a 7. So I'm probably going to get 10,001, but it's because of rounding. So that's OK. Um, those things happen. Uh, they're just asking to round in whole numbers. We can't have parts of people. So um, the, there'll be a little bit of rounding error in this stuff. And then it's asking you some questions about it. Um, but that's everything that's kind of here in a nutshell, pretty quick and nice. Will, do you have any questions about this stuff here? I mean, does it make sense? I realize you said you're going to send me an email if you have a question, um, but if I can answer anything now before, um, let me know. Still can't uh, get my camera to show up. I'll have to... No? Okay, well, if you don't have any questions, um, no, oh, you do. Uh, just a uh, yeah, no, and that's why I kind of go over it and show you all the stuff because um, it is a lot. <laughs> you know, until you do it, you're like, oh, I don't, I can see where that comes from. Um, so yeah, and on Thursday we're going to talk. We're going to take this one step further. And we're going to look at um, discrete probabilities, which are uh, binomial distributions and Poisson distributions. Um, and PDFs, which are, you know, um, not the file type, but um, probability distribution functions where uh, we use those things to come up with, you know, values of uh, um, uh, expected values. So, you know, it has to do, a lot to do with, you know, again, gambling and uh, making decisions. So we're going to look at that. And then on next week, uh, we will talk about um, uh, the normal distribution, which you know is a continuous distribution versus a, a discrete. Because discrete, you have to have it's this or that. There's no, you know, we can't have partial things. But in um, normal distributions, we're going to look at weights and you know standard deviations or mm -hmm. years and standard deviations or costs and standard deviations of stuff. So we're going to have these normal curves that we're going to look at, mm -hmm. and it's going to have we have a charts that we use to calculate, which we don't use anymore. So we just use the calculator to to do it all, and a formula. Um, so those are the things that we're going to deal with in the next two chapters. Um, after tomorrow's chapter. That will cover everything that is on the first test. So chapters two, three, and four. Um, looking at the class. Uh, so we are right here. 
Um, chapter one homework is due yesterday. Chapter two homework is due tomorrow. Um, we'll have the first test is due on the 19th. So you'll have a whole week to work on it. It's open right now. You can start doing stuff. Uh, there's 25 questions, but um, so make sure you get that in. Um, and then we'll be, you know, at, during the test, we'll be working on chapters six, seven, and eight, which are the stuff for the, chap the test after that. So, um, you know, we just keep pushing right through. So make sure you're kind of staying up uh, ahead on uh, up on stuff so that way you can uh, get through everything that we have. Um, and I guess that's everything. Uh, appreciate you doing uh, this. Makes much easier to absorb. Test one is due on the 19th. Correct. At the end of the day. So, uh, yeah, I, I let me just make sure that test one, let me just make sure in the schedule. Yeah, 19th. Is due June 19th at midnight. Um, so if you are working on it and then you like, oh, I, you know, like, so you really have like a week really to do this. And like I said, you don't have to do it all in one sitting, uh, go through, look at the problems, you know, go, oh, gee, I don't know how to do it. You have three chances per question. So if you're like, oh, gee, I don't know how to do this, go rework at it. Look at the, um, the chapter that it's in it. It gives you links to the chapter, um, let me see if I can go in as a student and I click on test one. It gives me a problem. I'll just grab one at random here, problem eight. I have no idea what, because it's all random chapters two to four. And you're like, oh, gee, I don't know how to do this. Oh, this looks familiar though. <laughs> uh, click on reading. It'll bring you right to the chapter that they're looking at. You know, and so here's all the pieces. It's on chapter three. You may have to scroll through some of the stuff to, to find what it's looking for, but it will bring you to um, the chapter that it's looking at. So find the probability of F. F is that it's a country in Africa. So I have all these um, there are 23 in North America. I'd have to add them all up and go all right, well, Africa is 54 out of the total, whatever that is. Done. And I can find that. But it's just asking you what that is. So some of them are really just that simple. It's a single problem. Some of them, I'm um, just trying to come find one that has multiple parts. Uh, some are multiple choice. Some of them have a couple of pieces. So, um, you know, you'll have to, you know, so some are worth one point, some are worth, they're all worth one point, but this one obviously has three pieces. So each question is worth a third of a point. So, you know, and you, so each thing you have, you have a chance to, to get three tries for each one of these pieces. And notice that these things are random. So the questions are random and then the, parts of the question are random. So um, the chance of people getting the same problem is low. <laughs> uh, so like this one here, like even this has a single piece that's, that's random. So everything else is the same except for this one number. So it just starts to throw everything off. So we have to, you know, and you go, know, oh, do you want to do that? And you click on the reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll bring you right to that part of the chapter and as well as examples. So you can test things out and try to figure it out if you're like, oh, I don't know how to do this. It will give you information. So um, those are all that stuff is in there. So you know, feel free to use as much of it as you need because um, I want you guys to do well. So, all right, got it, excellent. Uh, thank you, I'll be plugging away at homework. I should have chapter one and two, well, awesome. Um, yeah, do you always do the notes beforehand and then like the the, the questions. Um, if you need an extension on chapter one, because I think it was due yesterday. Um, yeah, chapter one was due yesterday. Um, I can give that to you. I think I did I close. Yes, I did.
Uh, let me just make sure I give you that um, extension just in case you need it because I, like I said, I think it's due yesterday. So I just want to make sure that you have it. Um, screen review. Uh, last name. Phelps. There you are. Grant extension. <laughs> Because I don't think it'll let you do it, um, so I'm just going to move it to uh, Wednesday. And then you are good. All right, so good luck. Um, I will see you on Thursday. Have a great night. Let me stop recording.